In this video, I want to start to talk about some of the main uh, concepts that are covered in chapter one of the textbook. And I'm not going to get into uh, all of the details that they cover in the chapter, so it's still important to read the text. But hopefully, I can give you uh, the big picture and the main ideas so that when you read those details, you have some sort of a framework uh, to put them into. Um, so the big picture, of course, is that we are talking about we are talking about research methods. So this class is all about the techniques, the methods that people have developed over the years for how to do research, how to try to find things out about the world. And of course, this class is specifically focused on research methods for psychology for psychology. So that means that in some cases, we're going to be looking at specifically how do you find things out about about uh, how people think so about thought and about um, behavior why do people think the way they think why do people do the things they do how do you do good research to find answers to those kinds of questions um, so to some extent we're going to get into things specifically about psychology but actually a lot of the stuff a great deal of what we talk about is just going to be stuff that you would run into the same the same techniques, the same methods, the same issues and problems that you would run into if you were doing research in really any area. So, uh, so in many ways, you can just think of this as science class. This is about how to do scientific research. Now, the first thing that the textbook authors are going to try to convince you of, um, is, since we're going to spend the rest of the semester talking about uh, research methods, they're going to try to convince you that it's useful. And that is the whole first section is trying to show you why, why would you be, why would you want to study research methods? Because uh, obviously a lot of you are just in this class because it's a requirement. If you're wanting to major in psychology, uh, you have to take research methods, but why might it be useful? And there are lots of reasons for this. Uh, for example, uh, of course, if you're, if you're doing research yourself. If you are actually going to do research, obviously you need to know research methods. Um, now, if you're saying, well, I'm not planning on becoming a researcher, I'm going to go into clinical psychology, I'm going to become a therapist or something like that, um, but I'm not, I'm not planning on doing research. Well, even if you're not planning on having a career in research, you might still want to consider uh, doing some research as a student. So you may not be aware, but there, um, there is a class at NAU called uh, called Psych uh, 485, and basically what you do in in Psych 485 is you sign up with a particular professor who's doing some kind of research that hopefully you're uh, you're interested in, and usually you can kind of look around to see what the different teachers at the university are doing their research in, um, and you pick someone that you're interested in working with. Uh, and you actually get to, as you know, the class is not a sit down uh, in a lecture room kind of a class, but an actual working uh, with the teacher, with other students on real research that the professor is probably going to try to get published. Um, and so you have an opportunity to get involved in research. And uh, even if you're not partic particularly interested in that, uh, you know, it's a really good thing to have on your resume, uh, on your on your CV, if you are wanting to get a job coming out of uh, school or, uh, or, you, or in particular, if you're wanting to go on to graduate school in psychology, having uh, research, uh, research experience uh, is really useful for that, especially if you're able to, if you know your research methods really well, you do a really good job and impress the, uh, the professor, they're going to be more likely to write you a really awesome letter of recommendation going into into graduate school. So that's one uh, potential reason why this might be useful. Another one um, is simply that, you know, if you're able to read and understand scientific research, that means you rely less on others. In other words, you're able to interpret uh, research for yourself, your research for yourself, you're able to decide for yourself whether you think um, a particular finding is valid or whether you, you know, wh how, what it means uh, rather than relying on friends or in particular the news media. We, we have to, we read about scientific studies in the news and they're very often 
given some level of interpretation. Uh, so the journalist will have to summarize what the study means, and in doing so, they often get it wrong, or they often exaggerate some part of it. Uh, and if you can actually go back and look at the research yourself, if it's something that matters to you, that's a really useful skill to have. Another thing they talk about in the book is the idea that you often see these abbreviated descriptions of research. So you'll hear something like there was a study that involved a randomized controlled uh, trial, or uh, uh, there was a longitudinal uh, study, or uh, a correlation was found, a negative correlation was found uh, between uh, height and income. Uh, when you hear things like that, after you've gone through this class, you'll, you'll know the lingo. So um, it's useful for knowing, knowing the vocabulary or knowing the lingo, the jargon that scientists use so that when you hear an abbreviated description of a study, you know what they're talking about. Another side effect of, of having experience with research methods is if you, know, you can, um, how should I put this, more easily win arguments with friends, win arguments with friends, um, or I, maybe I shouldn't say win, but more resolve. You can more easily, more effectively uh, resolve uh, disagreements that you have about something. Um, you know, after taking research methods, after getting experience with how science is done, I have found that I very often, when I'm getting into an argument, when I'm getting into a disagreement with someone, I'll realize that I don't really have enough information to, to justify my opinion. And the other person I'm talking to doesn't really have enough information to justify their opinion. And so after this, what I think you'll find is that you very often will say, hey, we don't have the data. We don't have the research in front of us to really know what we think about this. I'm inclined to, to lean in this direction. You're inclined to lean in that direction, but we don't really know. Let's actually go out and look at and see if there's any research that's been done. And, and if there has been, uh, can it resolve our, our disagreement? And sometimes you'll find that you're right. Sometimes you'll find that you're wrong. Sometimes you'll find that you're both right or both wrong, or that you know the, the, maybe the, the, the real state of the world is something you hadn't even thought of. So being able to do that uh, is really helpful. Um, you know, we could go on all day about all of these different potential reasons why it could be useful, but what I would say is that the overarching reason why research methods is incredibly good to know is because it gives you a more realistic understanding of the world. It will help you to, you know, the whole purpose of research methods is to help you get at the truth, to help you more accurately understand what is actually the state of reality. And if you have a more, you know, if you, if you're going about in your life and you have an unrealistic understanding, you don't really know how things are working, and you have a lot of misconceptions, the decisions you make are not going to be very good. So the biggest thing that I would say is that knowing these techniques, knowing how scientists approach these things, it can genuinely um, make help you make, I'm gonna say make better decisions in your life. Decisions that are based more uh, closely on reality. Uh, the last thing that I want to make sure to emphasize is that uh, even if you are going into, uh, into clinical, clinical psychology, so you want to be a therapist or a counselor, you might think, well, I don't really need to understand research methods. I'm not going to be doing research. It's not important for me to understand all this vocabulary, these terms, the different issues that come up with research. I don't need to know that. I very strongly believe that that is the complete opposite of the truth. As a clinical psychologist, you are going to be working with clients, with patients who are in, in some cases, very bad shape who are you know you, by definition they're coming to you because they need your help and you need to be up to date if you want to be the best 
the therapist be the most helpful to them uh, and avoid doing real harm to them by accident, you need to be up to date on the latest research. You know, the, the human mind is this incredibly complicated thing and uh, many conditions like uh, PTSD, uh, schizophrenia, we don't understand completely at all. And we don't have all the information on what is the best way to treat these things. But we do have a lot of cutting edge research in these areas. So if you want to be the most effective therapist, you need to be up to date on what works and what doesn't. And I can tell you from personal experience, when I was a student, I had a couple of different therapists that I went to. And I can tell you from personal experience that they don't always keep up to date on the research and they don't always think about things scientifically. And because of that, uh, their uh, clinical approach, their ability to have a real impact on their patients suffers. So from my own personal experience, I remember that sometimes they were very useful. Sometimes they use effective techniques. Other times they would go off into stuff that had no basis in scientific research whatsoever. Uh, then I was able to tell that even just as an undergraduate, not even as an experienced scientist. So even if you're going into clinical psychology, it is absolutely essential that you have a, a good idea, that you feel comfortable uh, looking at a scientific study. And that's one of my main goals in this class is to help you feel more comfortable, to help you practice the vocabulary, the concepts until they're no longer intimidating, until they no longer make your brain hurt so that they become second nature and uh, as familiar to you as anything else in your everyday life.